It's about the strategies you put in place, the kind of, you know, the right crops to produce in certain areas, the um, right environments, um, the availability of, say, irrigation facilities to up, um, improve yields on, on, on farmlands. So those are the things I think the government can, can begin to do as well. We should not forget that agri um, employment in agriculture would would continue to moderate because a lot of youths are migrating from you know traditional agriculture into modern you know the modern economy. I'm really saying that in this climate, uh, mechanized farming is not what I have really seen. So yeah, yeah. I mean, mechanized mechanized farming is what we should be looking into because in the end, when you have um, we have millions of farmers, right? Mm -hmm. And as the economy continues to advance, continue, and as well as developments in the, you know, the general economy, youths are more motivated to move into other sectors, meaning the current labor force you have in agri, they will be aging, so their um, labor productivity will continue to you know, remain very low. So what government should do is what to, we need actually, we need big farms, we need large scale farms, we need um, a mechanization of farming, farming to, to be able to you know, increase output and, and drive growth in the sector. So these are all areas the government has to look, to, the government has to look into to, to, to sustain long term growth in agriculture. One of the major challenges um, we've read about in the dailies now and I don't know if we should, if we should say that that is uh, a systemic problem or it is emanating from the farmer side of things. Is the debt recovery okay. from these farmers? Recently, the uh, Bank of Industry talked about the need to go after some farmers to recover uh, some of those credit facilities that have been given to them. Some of them who are yet to pay back. What do you make of this? Okay. Uh it's, it's the, the scheme, usually what government does is, um, we all know government supports the sector because yeah. um, credit to agri sector, in, I mean in banking, in commercial banking is very, very weak. Mm -hmm. So I mean it's a way of, you know, giving money into, putting money into the sector to drive growth. But what we are concerned about is really about, you know, the implementation of such, you know, the disbursement of such funds. Mm -hmm. So. What government is trying to do is they've been trying to, you know, sidestep the, the private sector, which are the banks. And we feel this is not enough because usually banks, before they lend, they are aware of, you know, the credit risk of, um, of, of I mean, the, the, the sectors they are, they are, they are uh, lending money into, and agri is, is very is characterized by high risk in Nigeria. Okay. Farmers do not have access to, say, insurance, for instance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's collateral is, is weak. Um, there's no secure land tenure. So these are all factors affecting lending to the sector, which government has not resolved, and which they think by, you know, putting more money into the sector, they can sidestep. But we really believe it's about, if you want to channel funds into the agri sector, let it go through the banks who have, you know, very um, um, quality, high quality credit risk management schemes. Mm -hmm. So, but you can profile the farmers and look at ways in which to, to, you know, adjust for risk and make sure that what farmers repay the loans they get. But, but with the current approach of the, the federal government through, say, the Ministry of Agriculture mm -hmm. and CBN, what we've seen is direct disbursement, disbursements into cooperatives and all those things, I mean, in, in some of the anchor borrowers programs. So this is what we think has been, you know, affecting um, the efficiency of the, you know, of government intervention funds. Government intervention funds should go through the private sector and um, the private sector can more, you know, adequately cover risk in the sector and, you know, choose or select um, farmers they can, they can um, give loans to so as to, you know, get um, repayments. So, uh, 2018 budget, 3.2% uh, of the 9.1 trillion naira is actually to be committed to agriculture. I think that's about 25 or 26 billion naira in some if we do the mathematics here. But how much should we expect now going forward from this agri uh, uh, space? I mean, agri funding in Nigeria, like, <laughs> like in other sectors, is still very weak. And that is because even, even, it's, it's, it's not enough to, to drive the improvements you want to see there. The, the size of the sector is, is about 25% of the economy of, you know, a 113 trillion economy and you're supporting the sector by 25 billion. 
that is, is very, very marginal. So, and we believe this is, you know, as a result of, you know, ongoing challenges as well with government where revenue collection has been very, very weak mm -hmm. and that affects, you know, spending in, in, in other, other sectors. So we really believe for, for sustained spending or sustained investment in agriculture, the government should try to look into the private sector. So it's developing a strategy that will bring more people, more investments, drive foreign investments, even local investments in soil agric. So that is really the, what government needs to do. Present funding is inadequate, and I mean, looking forward, it's persistently going to be like this. So it's looking at the investment, um, looking to drive you know, collaboration with the private sector mm -hmm. to increase investment in the space that we really believe is, is a uh, sustainable option. So you mentioned uh, the need for the private sector to have uh, the enabling environment also keen to this before government comes after us now to say that it's not about government alone. What more can the private sector on its own part do? I know a bank like FCMB uh, is also committing more funds to the yeah, agri space, yeah. especially through the uh, mechanized farming system, the equipment side of things in collaboration with uh, Babagona uh, in the north. Uh, but what more can these banks do in terms of lending now? now well, we, we believe, um, like you mentioned, some banks have already realized that, especially in, in the current low, low interest environment, yeah. to, to drive growth, they need to you know, um, drive loan expansion, they need to lend more to, to the real sector. And in some banks, we've seen you know, increased you know, strategy to, to, to drive growth into, into so, but manufacturing. On, on, on the final note, because we need to wrap up now, uh, do you think we'll, we should be bullish on quarter three, quarter four, basically H2 2018? H2 2018 we believe the harvest season should support um, a modest rebound in agri right. outputs, but um, oil production should also pick up mm -hmm. and support growth in oil production. So overall, we are, we are, we are, we are bullish that um, the performance in H2 should be better than what we had in H1. Adedayo Bakari, thank you so much for thank making you. it down to Business Morning. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Back to you now, Chimazi. Thank you very much, uh, Tempo. Well, let's see what happens aside from the lending issue uh, you and Bakari talked about. Let's just hope that uh, the second quarter GDP numbers will just be an eye-opener for the government to begin to do the right thing, particularly in the issue of insecurity. Well, we'll take another break. When we get back, we will gather viewpoints from market traders on Theresa May's visit to stay with us. <laughs> 